Hey everybody, uh, Daniel, Director of Sales East Coast here. Uh, wanted to share with you about the, the Flex, the new Flex R32 version. So we have the Flex Ultra in R32. It comes in two, three, four, and five tons. We've got a possible 1.5 ton model coming soon. The interesting thing about this model compared to the previous Flex model, now we have RS485 communication. So before, if you're familiar with the Flex that we had before, it was 24 volt control. And what that was great for was change outs. It was easy to use whatever thermostat you wanted to control uh, the system with. And so it was a unitary replacement option. Now it has RS-485 communication additional to the 24 volt communication. So it's an inverter driven outdoor side discharge unit, a standard air handler to go with your central air systems. And there's also cased a coil indoor option to go with uh, dual fuel. I uh, just learned that we have just placed the order for those. So they will be here in the next few months. Everyone's been asking about the A-coil. And so that'll be here soon. Uh, up to 17 SEER, 9.5 HSPF2. The heating range is down to negative 22 and the cooling range is down to five degrees without any additional, like a low ambient kit. So just kind of getting into the technology, just a hair, it's a different type of technology than we've seen in the past with the ultra heat. And what it's using is a plate heat exchanger. And then instead of just an open closed solenoid to inject the hot gas back into the compressor, it's using an EV. The Greeflex, like we, we all know, it will work with any 24 volt heat pump thermostat. The addition is that now the air handler will be coming with the GREE controller. Now, if you choose to use true communication with this system, and we'll talk about how that works in just a minute, this GREE controller will allow you to have all the modes that your mini split does. So you'll have auto mode, you'll have dry mode, et cetera, et cetera. So if you do choose to use the GREE controller with it, you'll have the modes. If you choose to use it just straight 24 volts, you can choose whatever brand of thermostat that your homeowner or you prefer, Ecobee, Honeywell, any of those. So let's talk just a minute about the, the, how it can be controlled. So we've done some testing on this, and Greg was kind enough to confirm this in Atlanta last week. So we do recommend go ahead and hook up the H1H2 communication in between the indoor and outdoor, because what that's going to do is it's going to allow this thing to truly be an inverter instead of just using what the previous Flex used, which was a transducer to adjust that compressor and fan speed on the outdoor unit. Now, if you just use straight 24 volt control, go ahead and hook that H1H2 up. And that way that outdoor unit can sense what temperatures are on the indoor, return, supply, the pipes, and the coil temperature sensors. And it can make those adjustments a little bit more fine-tuned than the previous flex version, uh, flex version could. If you are using 24 volt control, obviously hook up the H1H2. If you're using 485 control, then you need to use the Greek controller. And also the awesome thing that's coming up is there's going to be a touchscreen smart thermostat that will actually do the balance point calculation for you. Take a look at this GRE controller that is available. It can also be used as 24 volt or it can just use the H1H2 communication. And you've got a lot of different options on that. It does have a dehumidify signal on that indoor unit and it also integrates the system refrigerant leak signal as well. Now, this smart touch screen controller is pretty incredible. You'll be able to plug in your kilowatt cost and your or your gas cost, and you will be able to actually set your cost in this system, and it'll do the changeover for you if you're using the dual fuel system. The other thing about it is, is it's just two wires. So you just run two wires to this. So if you have a thermostat on the wall and it's hard to change that wire out, you can just plug this in with two wires. You put the standard GRE controller at the unit, and then this actually gives you touch screen control with all of the functions, uh, just like your mini split would have, such as your, your dry mode, your auto mode, et cetera. And this is just a little bit of more detail on how that would work. You can see 
the standard, the master thermostat is the degree controller that they're talking about, and then your touchscreen display. So I'd love to hear from everybody. Type in the Q&A box there and, and tell us how interested you are in this touchscreen display and if you think it would be a good option for your customer for a deal fuel application. And of course, with all of your R32 equipment, it's going to come with a leak detection sensor, an A2L refrigerant leak detection sensor on that unit. Uh, as you install this, you'll see, you'll notice the new sensor in there. And then if you lay it to, just depending on horizontal or vertical installation, you'll wanna move that sensor. And all you have to do is loosen the screws and move it over to the lowest point. It needs to be at the lowest point. So that the, the GRI R32 Ultra systems will work with the 24 volt thermostat without hooking up the H1 and H2 between the indoor and outdoor unit. But out of the box, they won't unless you set the dip switches. So there's a set of sw dip switches in the outdoor unit that are mar marked SA1, and there's a set of dip switches on the indoor air handler that is marked SA1. So switch number one needs to be turned on on both indoor and outdoor of the SA1 dip switch. Then you don't have to hook up H1 and H2. It will work with the 24 volt thermostat. But as Daniel said in the video, you're better off to leave those dip switches off, hook up H1 and H2 between the outdoor units, even if you're not going to use the RS485 degree controller, still hook up H1 and H2 between the indoor and the outdoor unit, then you do not have to set them dip switches and it will still work with 24 volt. Once the um, three, uh, service tool comes available for the flux, that's going to be an advantage to you by having those hooked up. You'll be able to plug into the pigtail both on the indoor unit or the outdoor unit and read the data from both machines because they are communicating. It's a great improvement versus the last version, having the RS-485 uh, communication capability and uh, you know the full variable speed uh, capability of the indoor fan with that RS-485 communication. It's just going to uh, better ensure even more comfort uh, for the homeowner at the end of the day versus the prior versions that were, were stuck into one speed with the dip switches. Some of the changes we made to the physical product itself as far as valve placement. Yeah. On the two, three time, it's no longer up inside the unit, so you don't have to use the adapters anymore. It's on the outside of the unit where it's supposed to be. So uh, I think the physical changes we made to the unit to make it more installer friendly, probably, uh, you know, my, my favorite thing is because it's going to make people happier when they're trying to go out and install the equipment. Right. That's good. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I'll say that, um, I mean, I like the fact that, you know, we can have a communicating system, but also have the 24 volt that, you know, thermostat that people are insisting on wanting, you know, as much as I love degree controllers, not everybody agrees with me. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I get I it. I think mine would have to be the fact that we went to a bluefin coated coil. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's definitely something to talk about there. Yeah, and it's, we got uh, not only the bluefin, right? It's it's the yep. entire coil is coil. Uh, it's coated now. Yeah, the U bend sheet metal and not that we had an overwhelming problem with leaky coils or anything, but any added protection is going to help, right? Yeah, um, I have to agree with Justin about moving the service valves outside the outdoor unit, getting rid of the service valves on the indoor unit. I think it was a huge improvement because them service valves, the way they were, were, it forced you to run the piping across the front of that coil and I did never like that. So now they stick straight out. It's real easy to go right, left, up, down. It just it makes it a connection like you would on any other evaporator coil or air hand. So uh, that and the, the, the dehumidification having the ability to be able to hit it with dehumidification, slow the blower down for dehumidification with the 24 volt thermostat. You don't need that with the green controller because you got dry mode. I actually got two things that really excited me whenever I saw it down in um, Miami. So correct me if I'm wrong, but both the Eco and the Ultra, they both have electronic expansion valves, correct? Because we now have the full variable RS-485 communication, they're going to want to control that um, 
they're going to want to be able to dial in that that EEV on the indoor unit, you know, so right. they can really dial in super heat, subcooling, and, and right. all of that. Now, with with twenty four volt communication, it's going to kind of default to the algorithm, the board, right? It's going to just try to go to a range. But if you have the green controller hooked in, it's going to be able to really take advantage of, of all those steps in that EEV. Um, but, but yes, that's why we have it. You're going to have much more precision control, whereas before we just had the the TXV. Right. And it just adds to efficiency and then comfort levels of the homeowner, you know, mm -hmm. person that's inside the space. So that's one thing. And the other thing is um, they actually provided an adapter uh, that way you could connect the service tool at either the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, the pigtail hanging yep. off of it. So it's easy to get to and plug it up. Right. Yes, sir. That is the new Flex R32. I'm excited about it. I think it's got a lot of great features and I look forward to hearing from everyone about it. So thank you.